Enjoy your journey! We have two teenagers, 15 year old and 17 year old, and then we have three dogs. That looks like a real oven. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we're here. Like, we're, we're living in the Florida Keys for the next two weeks. Like, uh, we've converted ours into a parent hauler. We have our bedroom in the back. So how do your kids like RV life? You know, this is a great option. The four shower heads, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like uh, taking a shower in a car wash. Yeah, Harold, you're, you're making us haters here. Well, hey guys, I am so happy to introduce another full-time RV couple today. And gosh, we're enjoying the sun here at Sunshine Key. Yes. We've got uh, Harold and Cindy here, and they're gonna tell us all about RV life, what motivates them, and all about some amazing upgrades they've done to their huge grand design Momentum RV. So, well, welcome guys. Thank you. Great Thank you. to meet you. Yeah, yeah thanks nice. for coming over and uh, filming our rig and, and checking it out. Yeah, we look forward to seeing, especially the living space. Yeah. Uh, you've made some major bedroom upgrades, which the bedroom is an important part. Yes. Yeah. You spent a lot of time in the bedroom. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, plus you guys work full time yep. Yep. on the road, so maybe we'll see how you do your office yep. stuff. And uh, it's yeah. It's currently in office mode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so for you, uh, if you don't know, it's a 2021 Grand Design Momentum 399 THR. Okay. Okay. So, Huge momentum. How yeah. long is it? It's uh, just under 44 feet, I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's even longer than ours. And so what do you pull this uh, huge RV with? We have a Ram 3500 dually. Okay. Yeah. How does it do? Oh, it, it does fantastic. Okay. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. You know, I, I like the sound of a Ram diesel. Uh, I don't know. It's just a little quieter yeah. than the Ford. Yeah. You, know, you Ford lovers, don't be hating now. <laughs> so anyway, we, we like to talk about trucks. Oh, so yeah. anyway, but a lot of people love uh, the Ram. Yeah, so. and of course we had to get matching. So we got the maroon <laughs> truck with the maroon graphics on our... <laughs> on there you our go. Grand design. Awesome. Well, hey, uh, let's get out of the sun and take a look inside. Let's yeah, do it. Let's All right. Yeah. Let's go. Hey there. Come on in. Hey. All right. Same person. Wow. <laughs> this looks awesome. Thank you. Welcome to our home. It, I was going to say, it's what we call home. <laughs> well, this yeah. is amazing uh, first like view of your home here. I mean, I love all the windows right here in your kitchen slide. Yeah, that's yeah. my favorite. I love the views. Yeah, the yeah, views that, are really nice being able to just open it up. Yeah, the that plant, the plants enjoy all the sunlight too. Is great, and you've got live plants in here too. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Travel with these, uh, with these guys. Yeah, there's a couple more outside that like the sunlight yep. more, so they're out. We'll show the you patio, on the side patio, soaking, soaking up the sun. All yeah. right. So, why did you guys pick this particular model of Grand Design? For for me, it was because of the side patio. Um, I wanted some place to be able to escape and enjoy my day outside without actually like having the dogs in the dirt outside because you know they get really dirty when they're under the camper yeah. and around the stairs and stuff like that so i really wanted a side patio for them to be able to enjoy the um the area in the, the outside yeah. without being dirty yeah we definitely wanted the the two patios um and then we also love the just the potential of having a a, a garage Yes. and being able to convert the garage into uh, into like a living area because where else can you get a 13 foot bedroom in an rv blank, so, blank slate blank like slate in the blank garage slate. right so <laughs> and a lot of people typically uh will put the kids in the back and we've uh we've converted ours into a parent hauler 
So we uh, we have our bedroom in the back. Right, and it will tell us about your family as well, because yeah. we should make that clear. You guys are not alone besides no. the puppies on yeah, this we trip. Have, we have two teenagers, a um, 15-year-old and 17-year-old, um, and then we have three dogs. So, so a lot of uh, activity going on in yeah. the camper, so we needed to make sure we had as much living space as we possibly could. And even with all of us, we never feel like we're tripping over each other. Mm -hmm. We never feel like there's just too it's much. Too no, much. No, it's great. Um, you can see, like, we try to keep it pretty open and not a lot of things laying around and uh, make sure everything has a place for it. Well, you guys got the right size RV, <laughs> even though it's full, and you're not even using the loft for people. Nope. nope. You know, it's storage. Well, that, that's our attic. attic. <laughs> right, that's same here. That's what we do. It's yep. packed full of storage. This side actually so. is nice because this one has an L shape, so you have two entries okay. to your wall. Okay, yeah, I see that. And uh, so this side houses all of our uh, paddle boards. So we have three inflatable paddle boards that go up there. Uh, because there's more, it kind of opens up behind this cabinetry, and then our, our normal like household stuff stays on the other side. Very cool. You got the travel Berkey over there as well. Yeah. Travel Berkey, got a nice little, we love the bar that comes in this because it's a yes. nice little coffee area. I like that. That is very cool. So I notice your AC is very quiet. Yes. yes. Yeah. So that's awesome because that's not most RVs. Yeah, it's not typical. The no. garage one is a little louder, Yeah. Um, but I think it's because the space is smaller, um, so it just sounds louder. And this is a three zone. Uh, three zone AC so the kids can control their own the living space has its own control and then the garage has its own control but this AC is also a heat pump yeah. so down to 40 degrees we can use that in uh, instead of our furnace yeah and then after 40 we turn on the furnace yep so we get this uh, you know save propane yeah that is awesome we don't have the heat pump but we do have the three zone AC and that's huge because I like it cooler than Cherie likes it. Yeah. So I get chased back to the garage <laughs> office and I can have it at 74 and she can be 76. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in the kitchen different. area. Yep. And uh, yeah, that that's awesome. And I, I'm not sure what it is. If It's a Coleman uh, AC unit, is that right? Coleman, Coleman. yep. I yeah. think you must have an upgraded unit to get that quiet sound because we have a Coleman as well, but it's just it's just louder, gotcha. <laughs> you know. But yeah. they, it, you know, it's a nice change. Yeah, it yeah. is because of our reflection was a little louder yeah. than this one. All three of them can be running and it's still the same, yeah. same volume in here. So tell us about your refrigerator. So this is the residential practice, which is what the R stands for at the end of the thr. The thr. Um, so it's the Samsung 18 cubic square feet. Yep. Um, and it's the double door uh, fridge and then a pull out freezer with an ice tray, ice maker. And then the residential residential stove. Stove. And um, the, uh, the nice. oven is really large. Yes. You can actually cook in it. It's big enough. Everybody says it's big enough to cook the turkey. I have not yet to cook the turkey in it, but we did make cookies in it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't believe how big that oven is. It's Pretty, pretty awesome. I like it. I can't show Cherie this video. She's going to be like... <laughs> She's going to be like, we're getting a new oven. I, I mean, what's so funny about... Uh, she loves our RV. I mean, she says, you know, every RV that we tour, she says, I, I still don't see one that I like right. better. But she still hasn't seen the long tour videos so it's like <laughs> uh, do you realize they had a uh, like an oven that works ours is storage uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. i mean yeah our reflection we used to always store our bread in it yep. because yeah, we, didn't really we, we didn't really use it um that much but this one we use all the time then, so our, our bread's actually above the above the refrigerator yeah so that's an interesting point with the residential package of this rv um it actually gives you the storage cabinet. bin that's above the refrigerator. So Otherwise, that's not there because the propane fridge has to sit up higher. Interesting. Yeah, so our that's friends, nice. Our friends that have a propane fridge, they, they don't have the storage, um, which is nice. That's where we put all of our Because they have to run the right. lines uh, for the propane underneath the fridge. So it has to be sitting up a little bit higher. Yeah, so, it's really so with your refrigerator being electric, all electric, how long can you go boondocking? with that we've only ever done one-nighters yeah um, okay and then we do have a generator so 
I have it set to where if the battery drops below 12 volts, it automatically starts the generator isn't that nice so. you've got the one control for <laughs> yes. whatever yes. yeah that's so like, great to have that setting it's one of my favorite features so yeah. right my battery yeah, it, yeah we, have, we haven't great. upgraded any any of the uh, power uh, okay system yeah. yet uh, that is definitely in the plan so. yeah, okay it's definitely yeah. in the works but um, right we haven't, had, we haven't had it happen yet the solar and batteries are game changers if you plan to do boondocking. We definitely want I mean, to. I know you guys boondock a lot. Uh, we we have that's a new thing this year uh, because we just got the solar and yeah. We're actually game uh, changer. after the Tampa Barbie show. We're headed to Magnolia Beach, and I think we actually oh. saw it. Oh, oh great! On your channel yep. uh, the first time. So, so we're, we're gonna we're gonna attempt to boondock there. Yeah. yeah, that that's awesome. There. One thing about the momentums is they're large freshwater capacities. It's like yeah. they're made for boondocking. They definitely are. It's like 110 gallons. Yeah, yeah. We have two. It's a uh, one large 80, and then there's like a reserve. Okay. Yep. Yeah, ours is like 154, 56 between the two combined. I mean, we have squeezed out two weeks. Wow. With okay. that. That's great. Yeah. I yeah. can't wait to be able to do that. That it's it's pretty awesome with conserving water and everything you can do, and yep. when you know when you find those amazing camp spots uh, that you're either all alone or pretty much nearly alone or the awesome view yeah. of yeah. course I'm more mountains and sure he wants the beach <laughs> uh, you know those beach boondocking spots are kind of hard to find but yeah. Magnolia Beach is amazing yes yeah, so we we'll, can't wait they were heading there so yeah it's actually probably a good a good time to bring up that we both work full-time and so like okay when we're talking about uh, boondocking and things like that. We have so many other considerations that we have to t account for. One being solid internet service, making sure that we have a place to stay. We can't travel on the weekdays because of work um, and things like that. So we yeah. we, we both work full time. Both kids go to school full time. Uh, so we have to make sure that we are in a, a good place with a solid internet. So boondocking is a little scary because you gotta have battery for the computers and yeah, you gotta have power. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All that stuff. So. We recently, the most recent, uh, I guess, remodel that or upgrade that we've done is we took out the uh, the theater seats, the Thomas Paine uh, theater seats that were in here, and we found this couch at Rooms to Go. It's like it was meant for it. The, the perfect dimensions. It comes up to the island perfectly when we pull the slide in. Uh, it, it sits around. We can still open our windows and it still allows enough room for our table. Like, I, I wish I could say I planned it that well, but <laughs> it actually just worked out really well. This table was actually mounted to the wall this way. And so I took that off, ordered legs from Amazon, mounted legs to the bottom of the table. And now we have a nice little workspace with a, a view of the keys. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's really nice. It's worked out really well. Yeah, that is like, that's like, huge the view when you get to work yeah you know is like that's that's it for me i like i love to have a view yeah. when i work right Us too. so Definitely. whose uh, workstation is this usually michaela okay michaela or, or cindy yeah nick, okay. nick likes to work in the bedroom um so michaela will come out here and sit at the table um and then we'll both go sit out on the patio um but that's her favorite spot to work i i'm on calls more yeah. So I, I typically have the garage because I can shut the door and kind of isolate myself because yeah. uh, I'm on a lot of video calls. Yeah, and so that way the kids don't disturb the calls and right. the dogs don't disturb the calls. That's amazing that you can manage all of that and to both be working full-time jobs and they've got full-time school yep. Yep. and you do all of that within this space. That is, that's quite a challenge, I can imagine. It is. It can be. Um, it, is, it can be and it's funny because the kids, at, at, at the beginning, um, our son was taking public school and because of COVID, the public school is just virtual. Um, so he had classes he had to do every single day at a certain time frame. Um, now we put them both in an online school where it's work at your own pace. Yep. Um, so they can do what they need to do and then they can log off. So if the internet's not good, then they can download the lesson and then turn off the internet and work offline. But they're not homeschooled. Um, they go to Whitmore yeah. Academy, which is a, uh, a private online school. Yep. Online uh, so school. It, it alleviates some of the pressure from us of having to uh, you know, plan lessons out and things like that. Yeah, so. they, they have teachers, they have guidance counselors, they have a college advisor. So yep. 
everything they need to succeed. That's one thing I've heard before interviewing other uh, full-time RVers that COVID has actually had some benefits, as terrible as it is, yep, and it's, it's wouldn't awful. wish it to happen at all, but more things going online and more resources online and more right. business done online, yep. jobs being able to be done online. It's like, yeah, hello, it's you know, it. it's like perfect removing roadblocks to this lifestyle. It definitely has. I don't think we would be full timing right now had we not because my job wasn't remote um, and Cindy was going to the office. The kids were in public schools and and so, yes, well, you know, we hate that COVID is a thing, uh, but we have, there has been some benefit in our lives. We're definitely being able to just be together all the time now. Like it kind of gives you a taste of what you were missing when you had to go to the office every day. So yeah. we absolutely, absolutely love our, our current situation of living. And you know, one thing I love about your RV as well, and Shirley would loves that they took out the carpet, carpet right here. Yeah. She does not like that. And that it's such a, a cleaner look it is and yeah, it's, you know it and it, it, they barely have any like lump to it either so it's and, it's, and it's speaking really nice. of clean it's cleaner yes yeah Absolutely. yeah it's a lot easier with the dogs too. right yeah you know, with the, when there's carpet like we have we have a rug in our bedroom and we're constantly vacuuming it for in here you know if i see dirt i can sweep it and right up to our little uh vacuum little dust vacuum pan and thing. sucks it into the stairs oh, yeah. okay and, so it makes it a lot more convenient to, to not have any carpet where, yep. where the dogs are all the time. So. Speaking of this lifestyle and what was the motivation to go full time? Where did it start? Whose idea was it? Well, we started off as just part-timers, um, weekend warriors, and then we came home from a three-week trip and our house had a water leak. Wow. So we had to move into the RV. Actually, we never unpacked from the trip. Nope. So we just stayed in the RV while we had to, you know, work with insurance and the contractors to fix the house. Um, and then it turned out that we have all hardwood floors and we had to replace or fix all of them because if you fix a little spot of a hardwood floor, the insurance does the whole house. And um, so we had to get everything off the floors. To fix we basically the had to move out. So we had and to move out. <laughs> the house, when it was done being remodeled, like it was the perfect time. It was the market for the house was, yep. you know, it's it's just insane. It's like it's never going to be for this sellers. perfect ever again. This right, we kind of had it all redone. Yeah. <laughs> but kind of stepping back yeah. even before that, my um, both of my parents had passed away. My dad passed away within six months of each other, and he left us an RV, and yeah. we had never owned an RV. At this point, we were already watching YouTube channels like such as yourself, KYD, uh, Changing Lanes, and yeah. like just just getting kind of ingrained in what RV life is it's like. Right. Okay. And so they, um, you know, they really inspired us. We never had an RV until my dad left us his, and so um, we went out a couple times, and then we realized that we needed a new one. Uh, so we got the Grand Design Reflection. And then we bought that for camping purposes. So yeah, going out for a week, a weekend, weekend something like that. So what was that RV that your dad left you? It was a uh, it was a Puma, 28 foot travel trailer. Okay. So yeah. just kind of a basic travel trailer. Sure. He loved, he loved to just get out by the lake. Yeah, um, it had the opposing slides. Um, yep. So that it was nice and spacious in the middle. Yeah. Um, and then we upgraded to the Grand Design Reflection, and then, but we didn't buy that with the intent of living in it. We bought that with the intent of camping. And so once we moved into it, we quickly started to realize that we needed something a little bit different for our life because we do have four, four people and three dogs and, you know, and we wanted to travel a lot. And then most recently we've come to the realization that we've probably already seen enough this year uh, that would, it would probably have taken us six or seven years of vacation time right. you know, to go. We've done 12,000 miles. We've been from the most northern part of Maine to now the most southern part of the United States, you know, and it's just being able to have that freedom to be able to do that is just, it, it's so nice. And my kids are getting to experience things that they would never have experienced otherwise. Like we often talk about how cool it would have been to have had our children younger, to do it with you. you know, and we, you know, Shree and I have children from different marriages, but that how cool it would have been to have done it younger and had, yeah our kids along because right it's like 
it's like the best education because you can, if you're studying American history, why not go right where the history happened? Right. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, exactly it, right. it's Michaela awesome. Wants, Michaela wants to be a marine biologist, which is what brought us to the Keys because yeah. you know, she loves the ocean and wants, that's what she wants to study. So. And she's graduating a year early, uh, so she'll be graduating this year. Uh, well, going into next year, and then so we've toured two Florida schools already uh, for marine biology. So she's pretty excited, and, <laughs> well, and that's why we're spending so much time. Better place for you to be for a marine biologist. Than exactly, us, so. and right when they're younger, their minds are so impressionable, and when you can take them to these places, it, it really means a lot. Yeah, it can yeah. change. Yeah, the trajectory of, of, of like their life goals. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely right. Yeah. 100% agree. Yeah, the gift of travel. I mean, that is so, I think, huge for kids because recently before I went full time, I was in Minnesota in a small town, Moose Lake, very small town, nothing against small towns. But I think when you grow up in a small town and you don't really travel that much, uh, I noticed there are some people that have a, have a resistance to traveling. Because they don't know what it is. I'm trying to say this positively, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I think it's important whatever you do to expand your your kids like knowledge of of you know not just the country but the world. Whatever travel you can do is huge. Yeah. The the unknowns are scary. Right. And there, right. there's a ton of unknowns that come along with transitioning from what our culture has told us is a normal life growing up in, in a house, establishing a career, going to a house, you know, buying your own house, and then moving to, into the RV life. Right. Like that's, it, it just goes against what we've grown up considering <laughs> is, is normal. This isn't normal? <laughs> well, I mean, culturally, right? Like, if you think about how how kids grow up, and like, typically it's school, college, then they go to work, then they go to school, then they go to work, then they go to school, then they go to school, then they go to school, college, you know, build a career, establish a family, buy a house, settle down somewhere. Right. Yeah, right and so, like, it, it's it's very um it can be un very unnerving to think about like kind of uprooting that and and going against that and so there's still times where we're you know we battle with like you know what are we going to do where are we going to you know where are we going to go like and and balancing that with like oh my goodness i can't believe we're here like we're, we're living in the florida keys for the next two weeks like that's <laughs> yeah that's it's, like, it, it's the pinch me moment like is this real yeah yep. this is where we're staying yeah and, and it's those moments that make it all worth it and absolutely just, like taking the killer power boarding and let her see all of this the starfish and the stingrays and so like that it's like this is this is why it's worth and it. we've like, met so many amazing people yeah. along the way that is by far the community, the community that surrounds RV life has just been amazing. Right. I mean, everybody here is smiling. They say hi. They want to talk to you. Yep. <laughs> I, I don't think I've seen anybody here in a bad mood. Nope. Uh, and I, I want to uh, back up a little bit and about that this being not normal or normal for us, but not normal to everybody right. else. Right. Uh, did you receive any resistance from any family members at all or comments or it, it was more it wasn't really resistance uh, It was more of well, we're not going to see you as much as we we would if, okay. you, if you stayed in town yeah, so My family is really close and um, and we see each other weekly and then so for me to say hey I'm not going to be home for like two months Two or three it, months. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard, right? You got mom and dad, grandma, uncles, you know, they, they want to see me and they want to see the kids. And so FaceTime has been a huge help yep. in, in that because um, we FaceTime them all the time. Mm -hmm. And then we were up at the top of Cadillac Mountain and I FaceTime my dad and I'm like, look where I'm at. Like, <laughs> out in the middle of the ocean, like just we're like FaceTiming, you know, <laughs> look where, like what we're doing. <laughs> That's so, so cool. So that has helped um, tremendously. And then we, we go home for. Um, certain events and they like, we come for Christmas and, yeah. um, and so that, that helps because they get to see us. And, and I have often found that people are kind of like there's two two parts to it. It's either like you sold your house, you did what? Like you sold your house and you moved into an RV? Why? And then the other people are like, that's the coolest thing <laughs> I've, I've ever seen. heard. <laughs> like you, like this inspires me to want to make change in my life too. In which that's that's really the part that we we really enjoy. Yeah. Right. It is funny how you get the different reactions. Yeah. Some people yeah, are like, oh, it's so cool. Look, I I would love to do that. Yeah. And other people, have, eh, what? Mm, it's not my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs>
Nah. Yeah. <laughs> Which I get, dude. Now everybody can live in a 400 square foot home. So. Uh, so, hence all the used RVs that yeah. uh, come onto the market. People try it, and it's like, eh. It I happens. mean, we went from a 3,000 square foot home to a 450 square foot RV. So, I mean, we can certainly do it. We had five bedrooms and eight acres out on, out in the country. Wow. Uh, so, you know, we, we can do it. I, I know I know others can. So, speaking of that, what was the biggest challenge? to doing this lifestyle downsizing? Well, I'm a little OCD, so my biggest challenge was finding a spot for everything because I don't like clutter. So. <laughs> um, and so we, we do have storage units for the things that we wanted to keep um, so that when we stop the lifestyle, this will have his, the table he built me and yeah. the, you know, okay. the that, that was a necessity to keep. For me, um, it's, it's logistics. Like figuring out, especially at first, because I wasn't really familiar with how to really plan things out. Uh, what tools to use, what resources to you know to tap when I need to. So at first, like that really kind of got to me of like, you know, I could potentially be in a situation where I don't have anywhere to like stay with my kids, you know, and and so right as a parent, I'm, I'm, I kind of freaked out over that. As somebody that works and you know, has to have that job for us to keep living this lifestyle. Um, that was kind of the biggest hesitation for me. But now we're, we're planned out and, you know, I can sit down and knock it out in, you know, just a few hours and have yeah, a couple months planned out. Yeah, before starting this, he was never boondocked. Like, boondocking was just like, mm, nope, I need, I need yeah. a place to be. Um, or mooch dock, for that matter. Like, yeah, and then now it's like, oh, we can stay in this parking lot. It's okay. It's a little bit of a pride thing, too, <laughs> like having to ask a friend, can I stay in your driveway? <laughs> sure. <laughs> but now it's just like, hey, man, like, uh, I'm, coming, I'm, coming I'm on my way. <laughs> it's such a great way to visit friends and family all over the country. Right, right. yeah. You know? Like, you still have your own space when you're there. Right. Which is great. Yeah. I mean, that's a, a, a favorite for Cherie. I mean, like, always having our bed. Yes. Right. You know, no strange bed, not in hotel rooms, nope. you know, not a, at a friend's house. I mean, right. you, like, you know, yeah. Yep. yeah, I agree. 100%. Yeah. So a better night's sleep. Yes. So you actually have the energy and, and you're awake to have more fun with your friends. <laughs> That's right. So. Yeah, and, and that, that was a big thing of, for me because we always wanted to travel, but I hate going to a hotel room. And with the dogs, and like you can't always take them with us. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, good point. So it's, we were limited to where we would go and how long we could stay based on do they allow dogs? Can we take the dogs on the hike that we're going on? Because they can't stay in a hotel room, you know, while you're not in there. Um, so that was a huge challenge leading up to RV life. And since RV life has been perfect, we're good now. We have to go wherever we want, and we're happy with all of it. Totally, <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, that's awesome. So I. I completely agree with you like being able to show others this lifestyle we actually started our YouTube channel one strange adventure uh, because her parents can't travel yeah. so we were just posting kind of like homemade videos and they could keep up with us yeah we were actually here as keys and we wanted to show them what it was about so we started videoing yeah. everything we were doing but um, now like our channel has kind of morphed into this thing and what we really tried to convey is the message of you don't have to be retired but you don't have to be, you know, single or just a couple to to live this lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. We're proof that you can work full time, the kids can go to school full time, you can have you can have the things that you want and still live this lifestyle. And so that's what we we really try to convey on our channel. Oh, I'll magically appear in the shot again. <laughs> <laughs> so again, we talked about how COVID has, in a, in a sense, helped this, yeah. but technology. I mean, technology how, has, came such a long has way. technology helped yeah. this with the ways you can get internet, uh, the amazing things they're putting in RVs now. Yes. You know, it, yep. it's not your uh, Puma. Right. From, no, you definitely know. not. Where you had to uh, so, roll the antenna out. Right. <laughs> it's none of that now. Uh, we have the WineGuard 360 with the WineGuard gateway uh, okay. that we use. And then we also, so we can connect to Wi-Fi's, you can put a you know, Verizon or at t SIM card in there. Um, we also have an at t plan that, we, we started a, a, an LLC, so we have a business plan through at t which is unlimited broadband through uh, the new Nighthawk uh, 5G. Yeah. So that has given us really solid internet uh, to be able to work off of. And then we have two Verizon plans. I have a corporate plan through, through my employer, 
and then we have our own personal Verizon plans as well that we can we can use as hotspots. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. You've got a lot of different solutions there, yep. and uh, I think that's a big key. When you have to have internet, you need to have multiple yep. sources of getting yep. that internet. Yeah, we've even considered like getting a T-Mobile plan just in case because that's a lot good. of places in Florida, uh, particularly like TTO, uh, where the internet is very spotty. Uh, T-Mobile does really good in those places, so it's just, it's about understanding where you're going to be, what what the best options are there. But we like to have the options that we can kind of speed test and, and figure out where we can work with. Right. And speaking of that, I mean, you mentioned Thousand Trails Orlando. Yes. And I mean, isn't Thousand Trails like a key to be able to make this lifestyle work? Yeah. It, I I think so. I think it's a key to making it. Uh, affordable. Uh, affordable and a little more simplistic. And the reason I say that is, is having one place with so many options um, and, and you know what your monthly payment is if you, right. if you choose to finance it. Right. And so you know, you can kind of budget around that. The first month we went out, or the first two months we went out, we were using like RV resorts and I ended up like doubling what my mortgage payment was. <laughs> and we very quickly learned that we needed something Different. Different. Uh, and it so. wasn't even that the resort was expensive, it was all the add ons because they charged for each dog, they charged for each kid. Extra yeah, vehicles. We, we brought our second vehicle so Michaela could learn to drive because she just turned 16. So we wanted the second car with us, and um, <laughs> they charged for that every day. Like it was it, it, so many different fees. So it was like extra $20 a day that we were there just yep. for the extra fees. So, what was the total? For one or both of those months, that was like twenty three hundred dollars. It was yeah it for was, for one month. For one month. For one, one month, month twenty three hundred dollars. Yeah, it and was, that was not including food and what we went out and did. That was just the have some place to live. It was essentially our mortgage. That was our mortgage. <laughs> right, and I know Thousand Trails gets a lot of mixed reviews. I mean, they're not all paradise. No. Like here, right. right? You know, and there is the twenty dollar a night charge here, so it's not completely right. included. Yep. Oh, it's within our budget. Yes, <laughs> it's okay. So right. What we have found is that places like this uh, and for Acadia, uh, we will still we still have to make time to to step away from our jobs and have a vacation. So we don't mind splurging every once in a while if we can't get into a thousand trails somewhere. Because we would do it anyways throughout the course of the year. Right. So it's making sure that we're stepping away and still taking a vacation and kind of splurging a little bit at those points versus all the times has, has been huge for us. And I think when you find a park, a uh, thousand trails encore, that's not great. I mean, it might be a great place to park. You can still enjoy all the amenities inside. <laughs> Sorry, our, no door, our doorbell just went off. <laughs> right, and so you can have these parks on Core Thousand Trails that are not, you know, maybe awesome uh, like this in particular, but right. you can be inside your RV, enjoy all the amenities, or go off an adventure, find the beach right. half hour, hour away. Or like TTO, yep. you can go to Disney. Right. I mean, right. all the other cool right. things around Orlando. Yeah, and then so like we even we went to New Jersey and we stayed at uh, Cape May, May's Landing, Thousand Trails. It's just a little park. It's got a pool, but it doesn't have much to be there. And so they played basketball while we were there, but not you know we didn't. There wasn't nothing to explore in that area. Right. And so me and Michael took a day trip and we went and seen Cape May and seen the lighthouse and. Awesome. We got to have all the fun, you know, away from the RV and away from the park and still got, he got work done and yep. we got to explore. You know what, you know what's really interesting and kind of a, a, a weird dynamic twist of, of when you move from camping to living full time in an RV. Uh, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but we, we have met people that are still have their day jobs and they just go out camping. Um, we have met them at campgrounds. And it's so different for us because the campground is no longer our destination. But it's just where we stay. The right. surrounding area, exploring that is our destination where somebody that's coming to the campground is getting away from work. The campground is their destination. 
So we've seen this interesting like kind of shift. They want to have pool time. They want to hang out at the campground where we're like, we just want to go explore the surrounding area. Right. <laughs> yeah, so it's a completely different dynamic. And yep. it's, it's neat to see. And we still, like, we have friends that we'll still camp with. And so they'll call us and say, hey, we're going to be in this area. Can y'all make it? And we'll go if we can make it. Yep. And they still, like, they set the chairs out outside and they cook on the open fire and, and we're never at our RV. They make, they make <laughs> s'mores every night like they do the camping thing and like we're not campers anymore we're livers so. right I, I i definitely heard that before that full-time rvers don't call themselves campers we don't yeah. do camping we're not camping we're not glamping we're living like this is just our house right and so it, it's, a, it's a completely different dynamic. And it's funny because even on the Facebook group, somebody will ask about internet and everybody's like, well, you don't need internet, you're camping. And, and it's like, no, <laughs> we're not. It's different. <laughs> yeah. And we have to have the internet. Yeah. Any other memberships at all that you guys use to make this lifestyle work better? I We do have good SAMs. Um, and we use that quite a bit when we're not staying in Thousand Trails. Um, so far, we've only been in Thousand Trails for the last six months. Yeah, um, we've been able to bounce so from park to park. I have, we haven't needed the... We've been on the East Coast mainly, and, okay. and there's a lot of options for so Thousand we're gonna, Trails. we're going to need more of the memberships when we go west. Yep. Um, because, yeah, we... There's a big gap in, in, in uh, Thousand Trails right there. The <laughs> right, there. right, there's nothing in the middle right. of the, middle. the country. <laughs> right, I might have to get your list of recommends or not recommends uh, for the East Coast as we consider that coming yeah. up here. Yeah. It was great. So. Yeah, and there's a couple of Encore parks in Virginia that we really like, and they were, um, they do good fans memberships before, so we were already getting like 10% off yep. to go there, and then with the good fans. Um, so now we can stay there as an Encore park and get even better of a discount. So. Awesome. All right, so one of our absolute favorite options to this rig is our side patio. And uh, I think it's the dog's favorite option as well. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here and just sit and relax. Uh, it's just really nice. And plus, uh, having two patios has been really nice because typically on a toy hauler, you have the back patio, but you're only facing one direction. On the side, you, can, you get the views either way. So it, it's, it's really nice out here. This is another option that Cherie really would like to have. Yeah, the side patio. And have you had any issues being able to have it out at any parks? No, actually, that was one of the biggest concerns and something that uh, people had asked. We have had more times where we couldn't put the back down than we have the side. Really? Yep, because okay. it, our awning comes out. If I can put my awning out, I can put my, my, slide pa my side patio down. Okay. Yeah, no, this this is awesome. I love the space that you guys have created right here. And uh, yeah, two patios. Yes, and Pretty it's really awesome. nice to uh, grill out on the side patio because it's right off your kitchen. So if you just set up a table right here and we put the black stone, I never have to get down and I can walk right to the kitchen when <laughs> nice. I'm done. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. I am making the steps down <laughs> to the gravel. Yeah, rough life, yep. <laughs> you know, to grill. But, you know, every step helps when you're trying to cook dinner quicker. Yep. <laughs> so, cool. That's right. But yeah, awesome. one of our favorite options here. And then we got a nice little, nice little coffee bar. Gotta have your coffee. That's right. <laughs> I like that. All right, so this is our garage slash master bedroom slash office. And, um, so I say office because we actually have a fold-up desk right here that I put out as I'm working. Okay. So it just comes out. That is cool. So that gives me a little space to work. Um, and then of course with all the windows open and the curtains, you have you know an amazing view to be able to work. Yes. Just sit here and work. Uh, so. It's really nice having the back patio. Actually, let's go ahead and that. Just having the back patio off of your bedroom is amazing. And you just step out into paradise. Yeah. Right here. Sometimes yeah. I'll I'll pull the desk out here and just work. Yeah, right that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I love the patio on the Grand Design Momentums. And uh, you get kind of some privacy yep. with the... Uh, 
I don't know what we call this, but uh, like the, the railing. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the gate. And system, you see all the little so. uh, puppy prints down. So <laughs> I see the dogs enjoy they enjoy it do. as well. <laughs> so looking this way, we have our washer and dryer in here. This is a an LG residential. Okay. Uh, it's a combo ventless, so no no holes in the walls. Um, and then we added some uh, some drawers to be able to have a dresser. Uh, and then very important in an RV, keep the moisture down. We have our dehumidifier. Cool. And we have a Dyson air purifier that is also a heater. So if it gets a little cooler in the garage, uh, we can turn that on and it will it'll keep it toasty back here. How does your uh, washer dryer combo work? It's, I mean, it, it, it works really well. Um, it, it's smaller, it's kind of compact, so it does smaller loads, but it actually does pretty well. Um, and it dries with like a steam technology versus like a, a heat. Uh, yeah. So it's not pushing lint out. So it doesn't have to push lint out. And everything will feel damp when it's done, and, but as you're holding them, it's dry. Like, so when you open it, like you think they're still wet and they're, they're not, you just gotta work on holding them and then- yep. Interesting. It's drying yep. it's because, okay. of the, because of the steam technology in it. Okay. So, and then we have a, a little half bath back here that we use. As a okay. little bit of storage and that looks very familiar. I think that's pretty much what we have. It's also where our laundry is uh, currently being housed. So most of, <laughs> most of the um, the lofts don't have that L, and they end up having a vent. This one has a short ceiling without the vent because our loft goes over it. Okay. Um, so like I know yep. on a few of them they have the the Air fan yeah, there. we've got the vent, but right, it to me, it's there's so much space up there, it's kind of wasted. Yeah, like so I like having the extra loft. Yeah, exactly. Space. We would we would totally do that too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if we could. A lot of people say the downside of the 399 because of the side patio is this little punch out in your garage. Yeah, so you lose that it space. does take a little bit of your garage space okay. to have the side patio. Okay, interesting. Um, but it's also doubles as our bedroom. So I can show you, I can show you how that works. Right. You've got the happy jack system I see here. Yes. I removed the couches off of the arms and actually modified the arms so that the bed frame that was on the top one would fit down in the arms. Okay. And, and the reason I did that is because the arms go down a lot lower than the top bunk would, even with the little stops removed. Right. Good point. Yep. And then I mounted this on here. I can actually, I have a, um, I, a monitor stand so I can connect it here and as a pole comes down and you can mount a monitor and then fold it up when you're not using it but nice. I'm, I'm currently not using it here okay so yeah me, uh, that is cool let me show you our bed and it just takes a minute to uh Come on down. I would not have thought of that idea on how to get the bed lower because it would stop pretty much right in that area. Right, like a top right? bunk. Yeah. Yeah, the top bunk's up there, and then the bottom happy jack comes a little lower. Um, Which for the master bedroom would not have been a cool thing <laughs> to have to be up that high. <laughs> right, and so we, we modified it to so You actually, I think you'll be surprised of how low it actually goes. And then if you see, my desk is actually the perfect size to fit in between the wall. So I never have to move the desk. Tight, tight squeeze, but awesome. But, and that's how low it goes now. Look at that. And then we have the Bettys. Because we absolutely love the Bettys. Sorry about the Yep. Okay, I've heard people rave about them. Why don't you explain that? So the, the beddies, instead of having to make the bed kind of the traditional way, is a, uh, it's a zipper. So you just zip it up and your bed is made. Very cool. Yeah, it's, it's really like, nice. It's like a sleeping bag, but um, with regular sheets and comforter. It's not that sleeping bag material. It's, it's minky, so it's nice and fuzzy and soft. So, so picture yeah. this, picture you're, you're boondocking out somewhere and you have all your windows and your patio open and this is where you're sleeping, just staring at the stars at night or back up to the beach or something like that and just being able to fall asleep to that, uh, yeah. wake up to that. I mean, right, that that is the view you wanna have 
for sure. I see you guys have the solid windows. Yeah. That, yeah, we we don't have that. You know, that is like an option that we want to get. We've talked to Lippert and they said they can't do it. So I, I think we're gonna have to find someone custom. You know, we'll maybe ask Lippert to send us that. Yeah. And see if we can have somebody else do it. But we we want that. I mean, we've got the plastic in it. It's not as clear. Right. You know, and it's not secure. You know, we don't feel comfortable leaving our patio down when we're gone. Yeah, because it's a right. Yeah, where these you can lock. I mean, it's right. still it's just glass, right? Somebody could come through it right. if they want to, but. It, it does um, it does provide a little sense of security and plus those top panes go down and there's a screen behind it so we can open it all up in here yeah get the fresh get a nice fresh ocean breeze. air yeah and then we just hung curtains so that we can have a little privacy when we're sleeping those are black out and you can't really see through them yeah we used to close the patio every evening to go to sleep because it's just a lot open yeah we didn't want to do, <laughs> didn't want to do on display <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so we hung curtains right so have to put the patio unless it's really hot. <laughs> but yeah, this is, uh, this is our bedroom slash office, and then it turns into a garage when we have to travel with the e bikes. So you bring all the bikes in here, yep. then? We just yep. bring the bed up, and then I, I'll, I'll roll the carpet up and just strap the bikes down right there. And then um, our bikes fold, and so I make sure the seats are the highest point, and I'll just bring the bed down so that it rests on the seats. And what do you guys go. have for bikes? We have four electric uh, XP 2.0 e bikes. Awesome. Love them. Absolutely love them. Yeah. Aren't yeah. they like, um, well, I mean, we did a video or several videos about electric e-bikes. I think it's like, it's like the best accessory. I agree. It really is. I like, mean. It's perfect for RV life. For getting around. Yeah. Uh, I like golf carts and I'm like, the bikes are just amazing. So. Uh, well, yeah, a golf cart would take up so much space. It would take up this the, entire the space. Garage. And then we couldn't use our bed if we try to like, you know, stay one night while we're traveling a long distance. Yeah, so for the boondock, we, we have the bed right on top of the bikes, um, and so it makes it just high enough for our little step stool yeah, is we, what we, we use to get up, up in and it. use our bed. Because this, okay. this Even big with the bikes ladder is for the loft, and then we have a shorter ladder for the bed when it's in its highest point. And we're like, we're, not, we're never going to use that, so we put that ladder in storage, and we just use our step stool to yep. get up on the bed. Um, nice. It works out perfect. Because we don't want to take the bikes out every time we're boondocking. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I love it, especially when it's nice and cool and you can open all the windows and the door and it's just so airy back here. Right, I mean, I, I think this is probably a huge thing for a lot of people thinking about this lifestyle that they look at the typical RV master be bedroom and it's pretty small. Yes. I mean, it, and, and tight. And if you are used to having a large master bedroom, uh, you know, this is a great option. I mean, I don't, I don't think they even come this big in the class A's. I know. Yeah. I it's, mean, it's it's nice to have a bedroom that's it, like you have ample walking space. You've got bedroom. room. The floor, yeah. And, and it, this turns into it. Oh, it also doubles as the dogs like play area. They love the ball <laughs> and everything. Yeah, sure. it's really funny because we'll open the patio doors and then raise the bed and then. Comet will take his toys and go from the back of the patio all the way to straight the straight down. To the he'll just door. run this little aisle. <laughs> it's, just, it's fun to watch. That's his favorite thing to do. Yeah. So. Well, let's uh, let's show you the the rest of it. So this isn't the only thing that we've modified on this RV. So. Oh, did you talk about the? Oh no, I didn't. Another another thing for uh, privacy wise, uh, this door came with clear glass. Being a bedroom, we didn't want to have to hang a curtain on it, so we actually. Uh, I. What? Frosted. Yeah, we we frosted. frosted the front, and then we used a uh, like a limo tent on the back. Oh wow! So you can't really can't really see through it. And it looks very classy. I mean, that is that is great. Because you can still see the silhouette, but not. Yeah, you can't see through. Definition. Um, yeah, I, I love the look of that. Yeah, it. I like this uh, this frost that we chose. Very cool. Yeah, we, we might have to think about something like that. All we have is like a, just a regular drop down shade. You know, and and even, with it, the, so. <laughs> even without the tent behind it, it does it's kind of like a shower curtain almost. Like okay. It, it'll kind of blur things out and it still looks good. Uh, but we liked it with the, the tent on the back so it just give it a little bit more privacy instead of having to have a curtain.
Yeah, awesome. You know, you have teenagers coming in here to make food, and you're in here changing. You don't want to chance them. <laughs> <laughs> taking a peek. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. So we did modify the front room as well, and we can show you that. Cool. What kind of fireplace you guys got? I think it's a fury hot. Uh, so does it beep every time you turn it on? We, we've we been in Florida so long, I can't tell you. Uh, <laughs> no. No. No beep. No beep. No beep. Oh my can, gosh. You can change the colors to it. You can hear it clicking, but no beep. See, uh, Cherie is really sensitive to sounds, and ours, I, I love the glass look. That's way better than the look that we've got. We also have a Furion, but the Furion makes you furious <laughs> because it beeps. it beeps every single thing you do. Our reflection did that. Every, like, changing from, like, if you wanted to go from 70 to 76, it was like beep, beep, beep. Yeah, and it's like, so... You know, I'll get up maybe earlier in the morning, and of course, you use the fireplace. They do put out heat. They really do put out heat, That's and nice. when the power is included, you can save on propane. Sure. And but I can't turn it on in the morning because of the beep will wake up Cherie, and it's like. And there's no mute button. Like it doesn't let you mute it. <laughs> uh, right, and I'm like, I'm like, what? What designer? in the factory or whatever it's not a beep would be a great idea <laughs> every time you adjust it obviously yeah. not an rv'er right <laughs> that's only that's in small spaces well, i guess while while we're in this area i'll show you we have the one touch control system but we also have the upgraded rockford fosgate uh sound system oh that's awesome and so it, there's a subwoofer under the couch and then the rockford fosgate yeah. speakers all throughout and then there's uh, two amp, two powered amps right here that will push it, and it, it sounds sounds really good, especially when you're watching a movie. Oh my gosh, it's yes, we we have the same setup, and it's you know, it turns your RV into basically a home theater. Yeah, I'm sure right. my neighbors love it. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, we went outside to listen, and you don't really Can't notice really the okay. subwoofer for that much. That's good. That's good. So no, we're not being rude neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the reason for the upgraded couch is because we wanted to be able to have movie night and have our daughter she likes to watch movies with me so we yep. like to lounge on the couch and you know watch a movie have movie night so yep. upgrading the couch was a big big thing to be yep. able to enjoy the everything that came with the rv and then uh just to customize a little bit more we added a splash of uh color with wallpaper on our stairs the oh back. nice so, I like that. Uh, that just, it kind of ties the couch in with the area. And then if you look up through the bedroom where I'm going to show you, it actually has it on the back wall too. So it's, you can, you kind of have some consistency going through. Very cool. That's just like a, like a peel and stick. Just a peel and stick from Lowe's. Okay. Yep. Very cool. And then this is our... Our bathroom, or the main bathroom, I guess. So oh, you you've got that rooms. awesome shower head system. The four shower heads, <laughs> which is really nice. It's kind of like uh, taking a shower in a car wash. <laughs> That's awesome. And it probably works here because the water pressure yes. here is really great. Yeah, it's really good. Sometimes you can't use the top one if the pressure is low. Or, it right. It's going to trickle down because there's so many openings. But other than that, like, we have loved it. We added the, we added the uh, the side shelving. Okay. Uh, on Amazon, then we added this towel rack to the door, and we added these baskets here for our towels. It's actually at low pressure right now. Sometimes during the day. Oh. Sometimes during the day we get low pressure, but. But look at that. Yeah, it's pretty nice when you have full pressure and that. it's. Uh, when you have full pressure and. Uh, you're able to use all the heads at one time. Another thing I'll say about this model that kind of attracted us to it, it's a drop frame in the front. Uh, so there's a lot more storage and there's still 
a little bit more headroom. So I've been in some units where I'm actually, I feel tall in it and I'm not very tall. Yeah, Harold, you're, you're making us haters here. So, uh, you know, again, we enjoy our grand design a lot, but we did not realize this whole drop frame kind of thing that you get with these upper end right. models and how much more storage. And now you say you get headroom yes. with it as well. I mean, and I, I'm seeing that in here. So yeah, this is great. And so this was the master bedroom. And so the it came with a king bed, which was the width of between these two nightstands. Okay. And the king bed came out to about here. So you had that little walkaway. <laughs> right. Basically no walkway on that side. And so what I did is I took that king platform out. I built an additional platform right here. Okay. I installed a twin uh, bed frame and modified it and then also um, made kind of like a storage area under the bed uh, so we have two twin beds now instead of one giant king bed and then we added this and this actually folds down and drops down so my son can still play xbox and stuff <laughs> okay yeah wow what a great modification here turn the master bedroom into a room for your kids and there's so much floor space here for them right yeah and you've got yeah this space for them to i guess projects or play or i mean yeah. whatever but and so, another thing we like about this model is they have these little port windows that can open up and they get a nice cross breeze okay uh, in here and then we did the wallpaper across the back do you want to turn on the lights under the bed to make a little yeah bit? that is cool the other one Yeah, that backsplash really looks nice in here. It's like you decorated for the keys. There you go. Right? <laughs> Our daughter's favorite color is teal, so that's why we, we went with mostly teal. But yeah, this is uh, Yeah. This is, this is probably the most modified okay. room that we've done, especially with this. I bought this kit and then I had to modify it down to a narrow twin. Um, in order to fit in here and still not come out in the doorway. Okay. And so, and then I took the, I peeled the carpet up from around the edge and moved it out to this so that it kind of gave it a finished look like it was, hopefully it looks like it was made there, <laughs> made like that. Nice. Yeah. I mean, great use of space. I mean, you guys have, you guys are living right here. You know, yeah. this is and the, and awesome. The bed's long enough for our son because it's a normal twin bed. Um, the the, the bunkhouse bunk. beds are too short for him. He's taller than they are long. Oh, okay. Um, so he was struggling when we had our reflection. <laughs> so, uh, yep. so this one's long enough for him. And then that one is just a little bit shorter. We custom cut the memory foam yep. mattress to make it fit. Yep. So how do your kids like RV life? They like it. Our daughter is very adventurous, so she really loves it. Um, our son was really reserved. To begin with, but yeah. he's starting to come around. He's starting to come around. When he realized we would still have internet and he could still play on Xbox, and Minecraft, and stuff like that with his friends, <laughs> yeah. uh, then he, he his world changed. He was like, "Oh, I'm okay with this." Because <laughs> it, and it wasn't that bad because we lived in the country. It, it wasn't like we were in a subdivision where he could just go to his friend's house, anyways. Right. Uh, so there, that aspect was he didn't really miss that. Um, so now he just he sits on. This phone talks to all his friends and plays Xbox and he's, they're good. Yeah, he's fun. Yep. And then for his birthday, he asked for a desk. So his desk is actually under the bed. Under the bed. Um, and it, he just puts it up right here. He puts it up right here so he can have his gaming stuff do out. Do school work and, and stuff. Do school work. So. Yeah. Wow. Perfect, huh? Yeah. It, we're making it work. <laughs> and I think that's an important part of an RV is like, is, is making it work for you. The more comfortable you feel, in your living space, I think the more successful and the, and, and the more uh, you will enjoy RV life. And the transition's sure. easier yes. um, when you can adapt to things that you that you like. Like for him, making sure he had the internet access and be able to game was a big thing yep. to make him feel okay being on board. Um, because you know, if we were to sit in Cape Ground, he had to go out and play with the kids. He'd be like, "I'm out," because <laughs> 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 he's not. He's not. He's a, He's an he's introvert. very introverted. Yeah, he's very yeah. introverted. So, um, so making friends is hard, and you know, so having his connections to his friends at home was a big, yep. big thing. Making modifications that your children, you know, therefore like, yeah. and don't have as much resistance to this 
lifestyle, uh, I think is really, really important because I, I think that is something, uh, you know, full-time families do yep. run into is making sure, you know, their children are, are happy yep. with that choice right. as and I, well. I, I think it's so important to let everybody just kind of experience it their own way because our, like she said, our daughter loves the adventures. My son would rather stay here and, and play and, and do his schoolwork and stuff like that. And that's just the, the people that they are. And if you try to force him to go out or you try to force her to stay in, you know, it's a bad experience for, for them. So I think we've learned along the way is just letting everybody kind of experience this in their own way. Has, okay. has just made the entire thing more enjoyable for all of us. Right, because like at first, like if we were going to the... Um the Key West, right? It, at first, we would have been like, you have to come with us because we want you to see it. Now we're like, do you want to go? He's like, no, not really. I'm like, okay, stay home. Yeah, like, so it's okay. I'm not, it's just more enjoyable for yeah, everyone. It's, it's what he wants. And so yep. he'll come and see stuff with us at least once um, in the area if it's something that he really is interested in. And then the rest of the time, he just does his own thing. So. Yeah, so. But we enjoy it. We absolutely love it. And definitely the modifications have helped us uh, you know, make the living arrangements more enjoyable for us. Yeah. Get my lucky charms. <laughs> <laughs> so the thin shade, uh, we actually did ours. We I installed it upside down purposely. Yes, we didn't do that originally. We did it down the other way, and then yeah. people said, "Oh yeah, flip it around." I'm like, "Oh okay." Yeah, flip it around because yeah. you can have the top open. You can see outside, but. People aren't tall enough. Generally, aren't tall enough to be able to see inside. Right, creates more privacy. Yep. So yeah, that's yep. the Lippert uh, thin shade, and I think it's really reasonable. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. And then we installed the the hit, grab handles on the screen doors. Okay, yeah, Which that's really nice shut. as well. Yep. Cool. Let's uh, let's check out the storage. Okay. It's not a pass through, but it, you also have a lot of loft space that we use. So right. So you don't have to have everything in here. Um, I mean, I've got four totes back there and I still have all this space. Wow, that is a huge storage space. And then I, I took the wall down and put like a, I mounted my charger right here for my Ryobi batteries so that I can always have a battery charged. And I mean, I have four decent sized totes in there. I can see that. The, uh, you got the Blackstone in there, chairs and a bunch of other stuff. And still got plenty, I could probably put another four totes in there. And this is, again, one of the advantages you said to having that drop frame. Yep. Um, you, know, you just get so much more yeah. storage. Yeah, otherwise so, like part of this would be taken up by the frame, you know, and your, right. your storage would be, would be uh, taken into. And I see your fleet of electric <laughs> e-bikes you know, it's right funny. here. We've had people stop and ask us if we rent them, if we rent them out. <laughs> oh, really? Because there's four of them out here. <laughs> but yeah, that, we, we love them so much that we've made sure each of us have one to be able to go on our adventures. In addition to the e-bikes, we like to uh, go out and paddle. So we have three inflatable paddle boards that we carry with us. And when they're deflated, they actually will fit up in our loft. So easy storage, they're light, and they, uh, they provide a lot of... A lot of fun times. Very cool, and just stash right underneath uh, your side deck here. Yeah. So it doesn't take up any of our campsite. That is cool. Well, thanks so much for sharing your home with everyone. I mean, yeah. I, I think and sharing your story as well, because I think it tells other people out there that they've got a family and they're working jobs, but they're they're dreaming of you know, escaping that regular, you know, lifestyle and actually getting out and, and, and doing this now. And so incredible, all of the upgrades that you've done. And, uh, you know, so I can't thank you enough. Um, again, Harold and Cindy, One Strange Adventure is their YouTube channel and social media. We'll put links down below in the description so you can follow their adventures and journeys. A little bit of a motto, uh, we read a lot of stuff, so a little bit of a motto that we've lived by when we started this was, if you're not changing it, you're choosing it. And, and that I was like by that. Larry Buchanan. And so we we really kind of try to you know, think about that when we're- Yeah, hone in on it. When something that we don't like or something that we're not excited about, well, we always have the option to change it. Exactly. We, it, it's really worked well for us. I, I love that. Yeah. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below if you're new here. 
and comment what was your favorite part about this tour let us know down below and from all of us here at sunshine key rv <laughs> in the florida keys yes. remember to enjoy, enjoy your, your journey. journey so long guys Bye, everyone thank you it's my wife's birthday uh it was on the 8th my daughter's birthday is today okay so i rented this thing probably about two months ago when i realized we were coming to the keys so that they could have a uh, sweet a sweet ride for their birthday that is awesome yeah so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that are you guys like going to the keys or yeah well we're gonna we're gonna drive down probably the key west and do like dinner and sunset and everything in that and oh, yeah. so we, we have it for 24 Perfect. hours so they'll come back and pick it up uh tomorrow nice. morning nice uh so this isn't like an everyday ride no <laughs> we wish i don't know if it'll fit in our garage it'd be something i would say, go if, right. I could, if i could right. get it to fit i would totally have one. you know like on top of the bed or <laughs> yeah. something like that something. i don't know <laughs> it's on the outside side. that's really weird yeah the seat belts go to the outside and it's pretty cool but it's really weird Stop.